Rule 111 is about the prosecution of civil action. We are done with Section 1, the institution of criminal and civil actions. So in this video, what we are going to discuss is Section 2, when is the separate civil action suspended? Also, we are going to read Section 3, when can the civil action proceed on its own or independently of the criminal action? And we, all, we will also read Section 5, the judgment in a civil action is not a bar to a criminal prosecution. As far as your Section 4 is concerned, the effect of death on civil actions, I will make a separate video for this because I'm going to relate this to your civil procedure. Section 2 of your Rule 111 is when separate civil action is suspended. So first paragraph reads as follows. After the criminal action has been commenced, meaning to say here criminal action was filed ahead but there is this intention to file in another court, in another proceeding, the civil aspect or the civil action. So in that case, you have to make a reservation ha, kasi ang general rule nga is together with the criminal action is the civil action. If you have that intention to file it in another proceeding, then you have to make a reservation. So in that case, if you already reserved the separate civil action, take note that you cannot institute it until final judgment has been entered in the criminal action. Let's go to the second paragraph. If the criminal action is filed after the said civil action has already been instituted, meaning to say the civil action was filed ahead and the criminal action will be filed later, what will happen if the criminal action was already filed later? What will happen to the civil action? The civil action shall be suspended in whatever state or what, in whatever proceeding it may be found before judgment on the merits. And take note that the suspension shall last until final judgment is rendered in the criminal action. So basically what Section 2 is trying to tell us is it's telling us to wait. Wait on what? Wait on the final judgment or on the decision. Decision rendered in the criminal action. Bakit? Because again of the primacy of the criminal action over civil action. So we discussed this partly when we uh, this, uh, when we took section 1. Another effect is if you are being told to wait, take note ano naman ang effect niyan pagdating sa prescription, prescription uh, regarding the civil action, take note that it will not suspend the, uh, it will suspend rather the prescription or it will stop the running of the period of the prescription. So during the pendency of the criminal action, the running period of prescription of the civil action, which cannot be instituted under this scenario, uh, which cannot be instituted separately or whose proceeding has been suspended under here, shall be told or shall be stopped. So take note, in both cases, whether the civil action was filed ahead or there is that intention to file it later, take note ha, again that we are just uh, told to wait. The rule is telling us to wait. Wait on what? Wait until there is a decision or wait until there is a final judgment rendered in the criminal action. But is this rule absolute? Kailangan mo ba talagang maghintay all the time for that decision to come out? Answer is no. Again, pag may general rule, palaging may exceptions. So, in cases involving violation of constitutional rights, in cases involving defamation, fraud, physical injuries, or there is that refusal or failure on the part of the public officers to render aid or protection, and in the case of quasi-delic, take note ha, yung civil aspect dito, it can proceed independently of the criminal action, meaning to say, it can continue or the, the civil actions will continue 
even if there is no judgment rendered yet in the criminal action. Basis, that is your Section 3 of your Rule 111. In cases provided in Articles 32, Articles 33, Article 33, Article 34, and Article 2176 of the Civil Code of the Philippines, take note that the civil aspect can proceed independently of the criminal action, meaning to say it can uh, proceed on its own even if there is no judgment yet in the criminal case. So section 1, it was very clear that when you file your criminal action, together with your criminal action is the civil action. But of course, this is not the rule all the time because if there is a waiver, there is a reservation or if the civil action was instituted or it was filed ahead, then the, the civil action is now separated from the criminal action. So take note that we are talking about the beginning of a criminal case. So this is the beginning. But how about the ending? Is it also the same rule? Answer is no. Kasi pagdating sa ending, take note that itong criminal action is no longer together with the civil action. Bakit? Because if you read the last sentence of your section 2, rule 111, the extinction of the penal action does not carry with it the extinction of the civil action. So if your criminal action is extinguished, it does not mean that the civil action is also extinguished. Take note, ha? General rule, if the criminal action is extinguished, it does not mean that the civil action is also extinguished. So magkaiba. So, kailan sila nagsasama? Kailan, ano ang mga scenarios wherein the civil action is also extinguished together with the criminal action? You re, if you read further your section 2, the last paragraph, what does it say? If there is a finding now, if there is a finding in the decision rendered by the court that the act or omission from which the civil liability may arise did not exist, then that is the time that the civil action is extinguished together with the criminal action. So take note ha, dapat sa decision na sinulat ni judge, very clear. It means that during the hearing, the offended party was not able to prove, was not able to convince the judge that he is or that the accused is responsible for damages. So, there must be a finding in a final judgment in the criminal action that the act or omission from which the civil liability may arise did not exist. So, if your civil action is suspended because... Um, uh, again, the rule is telling us to wait, wait until there is a decision or there is a final judgment rendered in the criminal action. Is waiting your only option? Maghihintay ka na lang ba? Sagot is hindi. Because you have that option to consolidate the civil case together with the criminal case. When should you consolidate? Answer is before judgment is rendered in the civil action. So, hanggat wala pang judgment, then you can move for consolidation. Where are you going to file your consolida consolidation? You are going to move for the consolidation in the court trying the criminal action. Take note that we are talking about your, uh, cost, uh, your course of action before judgment. So, Pag wala pang decision ang civil action, then that means that you can move for the consolidation. But what if there is already a judgment, a judgment on the merits rendered in the civil action? So there is now a decision rendered by the court at dalawa lang naman ang, pwese, ang pwedeng mangyari sa decision ni judge. Either the accused is civilly liable or the accused is not civilly liable. Take note ha, 
In both instances, ano ang sinasabi ni Section 5 of your Rule 111? If there is a final judgment rendered in a civil action, absolving the defendant from civil liability, it does not mean that even if the judgment is uh, accused is not civilly liable, it does not mean that you cannot file your criminal action. It is not a bar to a criminal action against the defendant for the same act or omission subject of the civil action. Kahit yung civil action na pinag-uusapan pa dito is, a, is an, an independent civil action, again, it is not a bar to a criminal action. What if the scenario is you waited, meaning to say, here, you did not move for the consolidation. Ang option mo is, hintayin na lang ang decision lumabas sa criminal action. So, pag nagkaroon na ng decision sa criminal case, dalawa lang naman ang posibleng mangyari. That is, either the accused is convicted, meaning to say, he is criminally liable, or your accused is acquitted, meaning to say, he is not criminally liable. So in both in this both instances what will happen to your civil action what will happen to the civil action take note ha that your civil action will push through magtutuloy-tuloy pa rin yan because the only time that your civil action is extinguished according to what we have read that is the fourth paragraph of your section 2 is if there is a finding, if there is a finding in the judgment rendered by the court in the criminal action that the act or omission from which the civil liability may arise did not exist. So if there is no finding, if there is no finding as to the civil liability that it is also extinguished, then kahit acquittal pa yan, your civil action will push through. Let's go now to independent uh, civil action. So what are your independent civil action? This is your Articles 32, Articles, Article 33, Article 34, and Article 2176 of the Civil Code of the Philippines. So what are the characteristics of the independent civil action? First is, it can proceed on its own. Kaya nga, independent. It can proceed independently of the criminal action. Number two characteristic is, it only requires a preponderance of evidence. And take note that the offended party cannot recover damages twice for the same act or omission charged in the criminal action. So this is your section three of your Rule 111. So the first independent civil action is Article 32 of the Civil Code. So if you read Article, 30, Article 32, any public officer or employee or any private individual who directly or indirectly obstructs, defeats, violates, or in any manner impedes or impairs any person, shall be liable to the latter for damages. So basically, pag binasa mo si Article 32 of the Civil Code, it's like you are reading Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution of the Philippines, that is the Bill of Rights. So, yung Article 32 enumerates the rights that you have under the, Bill of, uh, under the Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution. Yung due process of law, the equal protection laws, your right against unreasonable searches and seizure, the privacy of communication and correspondence, the freedom of speech and expression, the freedom of religion, the liberty of abode and the freedom of movement, eminent domain and impairment of contracts, adequate legal assistance and the free access to courts, the right against self-incrimination, 
the rights of the accused, the right to the speedy disposition, uh, disposition of cases, the rights against excessive fines and cruel, degrading, and inhuman uh, punishments, the rights against double jeopardy, and the right against involuntary servitude. And speaking of the rights of the accused, connect that to your Rule 115 ng Rules of Court. So, para ka na rin nagbasa naman ng Rule 115, the right to be presumed innocent, the right to be informed of the nature of the cause of the accusation against the accused, the right to be present and defend in person and by counsel at every stage of the proceeding, the right to counsel, the right to testify as a witness in his own behalf, the right to be exempt from being compelled to be a witness against himself, the right against self-incrimination, the right to confront and cross-examine the witnesses against him at their trial, the right to have compulsory processes, the right to have speedy, impartial, and public trial, and the right to appeal in all cases allowed and in the manner prescribed by law. So basically, what Article 32 is telling us is, is that if there is a violation of constitutional rights, then the aggrieved party, take note ha, that this aggrieved party includes the accused kasi si accused merong constitutional rights. So the aggrieved party or the offended party has a right to commence an entirely separate and distinct civil action for damages and four other reliefs. And take note that this civil action can proceed on its own. Hindi niya, pwede, uh, hindi, hindi niya, pwede niyang hindi hintayin ang outcome sa criminal case. It can proceed independently of any criminal prosecution and it can be proved by a preponderance of evidence. Relate further our discussion to rule or to book to rather of the of the revised penal code that is the crimes against the fundamental laws of the state. So if a person is charged with arbitrary detention or expulsion, violation of dwelling or prohibition, interruption and dissolution of peaceful meetings or the interruption of religious worship or offending the religious feelings, take note ha, kahit wala pang decision na narender sa criminal action, you can still file a civil action because the civil aspect here is an independent civil action. That is an example of your Article 32. So recall that case of Carlos, Carlos Seldran. So si Carlos Seldran, he was charged with Article 33, offending the religious feelings. So, ang rule is, kung na-file na yung criminal case, you have to wait for the decision in the criminal case. But since this is Article 32 of your civil code, so even if the case or even if the criminal case is pending, still, you do not have to wait the outcome or the, you do not have to wait for the decision of the criminal case because again, this is an example of your independent civil action. Let's read Article 33 of the Civil Code. So, in cases of defamation, fraud, and physical injuries, a civil action for damages which is entirely separate and distinct from the criminal action may be brought by the injured party. And such civil action, again, it can proceed independently of the criminal prosecution and shall require only a preponderance of evidence. Let's go to Article 34 of your Civil Code. When a member of a city police force or a member of a municipal police force refuses or fails to render aid or protection to any person in case of danger to life or property, then such peace officer shall be primarily liable for damages. What about the city or the municipality? The city or municipality is also uh, responsible but take note that his liability is subsidiary. The city or municipality shall be subsidiarily responsible therefore. The civil action herein recognized shall be independent of any criminal proceedings 
and a preponderance of evidence shall be shall suffice to support such action. The last uh, independent civil action is your quasi delict. So that is your Article 2176 of the Civil Code. So whoever by act or omission causes damage to another, there being fault or negligence is obliged to pay for the damage done. And such fault or negligence, even if there is no pre-existing contractual relation between the parties, is called a quasi-delict. So based on our readings from Articles 32 to 34 and Section 3 of the Rules of Court, if you, are, if you will be asked about the characteristics of independent civil action, madali nang sagutin because, again, from what we have gathered, your independent civil action is brought by the offended party and that independent civil action, kaya nga independent, is because it can proceed on its own or it can proceed independently of any criminal prosecution and as to the evidence required, take note that only preponderance of evidence. Kanina pa natin nababasa or naririnig ang preponderance of evidence. Take note ha, kung sa criminal case, the degree of evidence required is proof beyond reasonable doubt. For, a, for an accused to be convicted, dapat it must be proven beyond reasonable doubt. And in your administrative or quasi-judicial bodies, what, only, what is only required is substantial evidence Take note that when we talk about civil cases, even if it is an independent civil action, take note that what is required is only preponderance of evidence. At ano ba itong preponderance of evidence? How do you determine? The uh, answer can be found in your section 1 of your rule 133, sa rules of evidence. So in civil cases, the party having the burden of proof must establish his or her case by a preponderance of evidence. And in determining where the preponderance or superior weight of evidence on the issues involved lies, the court may consider all the facts and circumstances of the case, including the witnesses' manner of testifying, their intelligence, the means and opportunity of the witnesses of knowing the facts to which they are testifying, the nature of the facts to which they testify, the probability or improbability of their testimony, their interest or want of interest, and also the personal credibility of the witness so far as the same may legitimately appear upon the trial. And take note sa civil case, the court may also consider the number of witnesses, though the preponderance is not necessarily with the greater number. So, ito ang pinag-uusapan nating preponderance of evidence. Take note of your prohibition on double recovery. What is that? According to Section 3, the last sentence, the offended party cannot recover damages twice for the same act or omission charged in the criminal action.